Before we proceed with how the ancient Hebrew lexicon of the Bible works, we need to have a basic understanding of Hebrew root words. All Hebrew linguists recognize that most Hebrew words are derived from a triliteral or three-letter root, such as in the root Natsar. However, there are some linguists who have suggested that these triliteral roots are themselves derived out of a biliteral or two-letter root. This biliteral root, the word Tsar, has the meaning of a narrow or tight place. And each of the triliteral root words that are derived out of it have a meaning that is related to being in a narrow or tight place. William Jacinius wrote in his book Jacinius' Hebrew Grammar, a large number of triliteral stems really point to a biliteral base which may be properly called a root, since it forms the starting point for several triliteral modifications of the same fundamental idea. Jacinius then cites the following example. The biliteral root, car, is the root of these four triliteral roots, each being related to the idea of digging. Another example he provides is the biliteral root dak, and these four triliteral roots are related to the idea of striking or breaking. While all other lexicons only take Hebrew words back to a three-letter root, the ancient Hebrew lexicon takes words back to their two-letter root. To demonstrate how the ancient Hebrew lexicon works, let's do a word study on the word covenant, identified by Strong's number 1285. In the back of the book is the ancient Hebrew lexicon numbering system indexed by Strong's numbers. On page 557, we find Strong's number 1285. This word is located in the ancient Hebrew lexicon at 1043 H N4. The first four digit number is the two letter root, which the ancient Hebrew lexicon calls a parent root. We find this parent root on page 72. We will come back to the content here, but for now, let's just go down until we find the letter H which is the identifier for the three-letter root, which is called a child root in the lexicon. And we find this root on page 74. Now we go down the page to find the word identified as N4. And here it is, where it is written as NF4. The F means that it is a feminine noun. Each word entry includes the Hebrew word spelled in Ancient Hebrew and Modern Hebrew and a transliteration of the Hebrew in English. This is followed by a translation of this Hebrew word, which is covenant, and then a detailed definition. A covenant is instituted through a sacrifice of a choice fatted animal, which is cut into two, and the parties of the covenant pass through the pieces. If one party fails to meet the agreements of the covenant, then the other party may do the same to them. This is the frequency that this Hebrew word is used in the Hebrew Bible. Then we have the ways that this word is translated in the King James Bible and then the Strong's number associated with this word. Now we want to go up to the child root that this word is derived out of, the root we previously identified by the letter H. Each root word is spelled out in Ancient Hebrew and Modern Hebrew and a transliteration. And then you are provided three translations of this root. The first is the action of the root, to eat, a concrete definition, 
meet, and an abstract definition, covenant. This is then followed by a definition of this root. The grain is used as food for man or livestock. Livestock-fed grains become fat and are the choicest for the slaughter. Now let's take a look at all the other words derived from this child root and their meanings. Eat, meat, covenant, fat, and meat again. If you look at the biblical phrase, make a covenant, which occurs several times in the Bible, and look up the word make, you will find that it is a Hebrew word meaning to cut. This phrase literally reads, cut a covenant. A covenant, from a Hebrew perspective, is literally the meat that is cut and used for making a covenant. Now, let's go back up to the parent root. The parent root includes the same content as the child root. The Hebrew spelling, a transliteration, and then the three meanings of this word. And then it provides a detailed definition of this parent root. We can see that this parent root has the meaning of feed and grain. Now we can go down through all the child roots derived out of this parent root and the words that are derived out of the child roots, looking for some common themes. This word has the meanings of grain, soap, and clean. This word means clean and choice. Here we have to fill and fat. Divide. Divide, soap. Here we are back at the root of the Hebrew word for covenant. Eat, meat, covenant, fat, and meat again, soap, and clean. What can we gather from all of these words? Grain is used to fill and fatten livestock. The livestock provide meat and fat. The fat is made into soap, which is used to clean. The meat is for eating, but the choicest meat is divided into two parts and used in the covenant ceremony. There is another type of root in this lexicon, the adopted root. These three-letter roots are identified by a four-digit number, but begin with the two thousands, whereas the parent roots begin with the one thousands. For a more detailed explanation of the differences between the parent, child, and adopted roots, refer to the introductory material at the front of the lexicon. This is the adopted root identified by number 2042 and means Cyprus. The adopted roots follow the same format as the child roots, and the words derived from them also follow the same format. They include the Hebrew, a transliteration, and definitions. The only difference is that the adopted root will identify the parent root, if known, which it is believed to be derived from. In this case, it is believed that the root is derived from the parent root bar, which we have been examining, in the sense of the cypress wood being a choice wood. If we go back to the end of the roots derived from bar, where we have been studying the words related to a covenant, 
we will see all of the adopted roots derived from this parent root. And here is 2042, the word for Cyprus. Through this exercise, we have uncovered a part of the culture of the Hebrew people. Now, when you read about grains and cleanliness and meat and sacrifices and covenants, you will be thinking of these terms in the context of the ancient Hebrew culture rather than from your own cultural perspectives.